Wow, T 10 years, I cannot possibly believe uh, that has happened. Uh, for those of you that I have not had a chance to meet yet, my name is Rob Nail. I'm the CEO and one of the associate founders of Singularity University, which means I attended the first executive program at Singularity University now more than eight years ago, so I haven't been here the whole time, but I have an interesting history with Singularity University, and, and it is moving at an ex exponential rate, and you're going to see a lot more to come in the next 10 years. And so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that over time. But for me personally, I am an engineer and an entrepreneur. I started my career uh, at looking at technology, fell into an amazing business where I started developing robotics and automation for cancer research and drug discovery, built up a pretty successful business, sold that to Agilent, worked at Agilent, a big company, almost 30,000 people when I left, uh, learned a lot about corporate bureaucracy and slow pace of innovation at a big company. A little bit of a challenge with an exponential world around us. So I left and I met this guy, Peter Diamandis. And he said, hey, we just started this thing called Singularity University. You should come check it out. I was like, that sounds amazing. So I attend the first exec program. I think I walk in the door being the expert in robotics and biotech because I built a leading edge robotics business, been in and out of every pharma. And in my week, I'm discovering all these crazy things happening in robotics and biotech I did not realize were already happening. Huh, how do I think of myself as an expert in a space if I don't even know what's happening in my own space? Well, which kind of makes sense, right? Our education system and everything is about going deeper and deeper into a narrower and narrow space to be an expert. So where do you go to get this broad horizon of all these different things that are happening? The second real epiphany that hit me was, was that I also learned about breakthroughs happening in neuroscience and nanotech that were converging to disrupt that robotics business that I'd built. And at the end of the week, I joked, not really a joke, thank goodness I'd sold my business when I did because it was in trouble and I, I didn't see it coming, which is pretty relevant for most of us today, right? You just saw all the breakthroughs that, that will walk through. Every industry is under threat from these crazy technologies. So after my week, I pitched Peter on a hundred different ideas and I never left, right? He tried to kick me out a bunch of times, but I never would go away much like many of you may do after this week. So uh, we are very open to that. That's the sort of core of where we came from. As you saw from Will, every technology that we're starting to foresee and look at is disrupting every aspect of our lives, every business, every industry, and society as a whole. And how do we deal with this? The wave of information, the news, the articles, all these breakthroughs, how do you know what is important, what is urgent, what's relevant, what poses a threat, what's real, and what's fake. And interestingly, on this exponential curve, this is the slowest period of change that we're ever going to experience. So if you're having a hard time keeping up with it now, buckle up. We also don't really talk about the future very often, at least not the long-term future. The only articulation of the long-term technological future we're living into from news and media and Hollywood is increasingly this dystopian Hunger Games zombie apocalypse scenario, which is horrible. All the incentive models for our businesses really don't get much farther along than next quarter earnings. And politically, we can't really get past the next political uh, election cycle. So this is putting us in a weird place where we don't have a framework for navigating the crazy accelerating pace of change. We don't have a long-term vision that's positive to live into. And it leaves us in this state of anxiety and fear. And operating out of fear is a dangerous place. And I'll suggest all politics aside, we make decisions based out of fear, looking for stability, looking at the past as stable ground. We are not leading with visions of the possible future that we can create. And we need to change that narrative. But it's also not easy because we have the realities of today to deal with as well. In fact, when I pose the opportunity to talk about a 20 year amazing vision of a future that we could create, a lot of times I'm faced with, wait a minute, we step over this every day. In fact, many of you may have walked past the homelessness problem that's here in San Francisco, which has only gotten worse over the last few years. Do we have the luxury of time to think about this long-term sci-fi future when we have this problem to deal with today? I'll suggest we don't solve that problem without focusing on that long-term vision. It's the only way that we'll get there. 
So we have a lot to deal with. But interestingly, we see it. We can forecast it. We have tools and frameworks to think about where this is taking us and what we can do about it. My favorite quote is from Ernest Hemingway in The the Sun Also Rises. How did you go bankrupt? Two ways, gradually and then suddenly. (laughs) We see all these technological advancements. We can forecast, we look at the drivers, we can imagine where they will take us and what the opportunities are. We just have to have the social, political, and individual courage to walk that path, which is not always so easy. To move from a linear to an exponential mode of operating, I think you need three key things. First is the mindset. You need an exponential mindset, a framework for looking at technology today and the future in a new way. Second, you need new types of tools and resources to navigate a new pace of change. And third, you need a different kind of support network, a different ecosystem that will support new ways of thinking and a faster pace that thinks about making a difference at scale. This is what I would describe Singularity University does and what we're all about. We are bringing together a global community, which you will see over the next few days is extremely global to think differently about the future that we can create and to activate and move into it. I personally am doing it in large part because of these two. I have two kids, Beckett, he just turned five. He started kindergarten today, weird. And Romy, she's turning two next month. I know that their future looks nothing like my past. These two are never gonna learn how to drive a car. They're not gonna go to college, at least remotely the way that I did. They will very likely go into space. I may go with them. They quite likely will live to be well over 100 years old. And if you listen to Peter and others, several hundred years old. How do I prepare them for that? It is certainly not the old industrial education system that we're currently equipped with. It's something wholly different. I like this quote from Astro Teller, the captain of moonshots at Alphabet, Google's sort of crazy skunk works project area. Astro likes to say, in a constant state of destabilization, the new kind of stability has to be dynamic stability, like riding a bicycle. Humanity has to learn to exist in this state. Everything we do from now on needs to be dynamic. The processes, the tools, the team we put into place have to be adaptable. Our education system is obsolete as it is today. I personally love to talk about the future of education. I like to be provocative and suggest that we should get rid of the degree. Because the degree is this static thing that you work really hard to get and then you're set, right? No. If that's your mentality, you're not going to be very successful in this future. We have to shift from education to a a mode of continuous learning, a lifetime of learning. This, for those of you that this is your first experience with SU, this is the first stop on a long journey at Singularity University. We expect to see many of you back here and in many other programs and to plug into the programs that we have running all over the world because there are many, many different ways that you can activate and get involved in making a difference at a bigger scale. And you're gonna hear from Peter Diamandis, one of the best people to inspire you on how the world's biggest problems truly are the biggest business opportunities. We have a classification system and a framework for thinking about what we call the global grand challenges as entrepreneurial opportunities. These are problems that can be solved. Not with an old mindset though. They can't be solved by silos of NGOs that won't work with those evil greedy corporations and governments that don't know how to talk to startups. There's a different kind of ecosystem and collaboration that has to happen to truly impact these at scale. And maybe most importantly, and what I hope you will take advantage of while you're here, is to break down those silos, we need to have different conversations with people that we don't normally have conversations with. We work very hard at Singularity University to bring very diverse perspectives together. We've come up with six different groups that we like to always have in a room. We want to always have startups and entrepreneurs, corporates, executives, governments and policymakers, nonprofit NGOs, other academic thought leaders, and finance and investment leaders. If you bring them together with also a geographic diversity and representation, socioeconomic diversity, gender diversity, religious diversity, 
you get a set of perspectives that are representative of humanity. And when you talk about the biggest problems, poverty, health, education, they affect all of us, no matter where you're from, no matter what age. And the opportunities today are to harness these exponential technologies to radically transform and change how we affect those problems. The grand challenges are not technology problems. Those are social and political courage problems. And if we bring the right community together to activate, we can truly make a difference on them. Because I believe we have a choice. We can just sit around and wait to see what the future looks like. And unfortunately, we may very well just manifest that dystopian future that Hollywood is feeding us. Or we can shape a new narrative and create some extraordinary future that is a lot different than what we live in today. It's a lot different than the economic system, the governance systems, the models that we're operating under that were set up hundreds and thousands of years ago today will not work in this future of abundance that you'll hear from Peter. We have a lot of transformation to go through. But I'll suggest this quote from Howard Schultz, the former CEO and now chairman of Starbucks. When you're surrounded by people who share a passionate commitment around a common purpose, anything is possible. I believe what we all share in this room is a, a hope and a desire for a future that our kids, our grandkids, and maybe even all of us who might very well live to be 150 or 300, if you talk to Peter, that we will share in. So I want to welcome you. Thank you all for taking this big step on this journey. For all of you that are returning, welcome back. We are very excited about the next 10 years of how we can use and leverage the network effects of this global community to make a difference and shape the future that we want. Thank you very much.